Hey guys, this is Derek from the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast. Just want to let you know about this great partnership that we have with Collar and Elbow now. You can check out all of their great merchandise at collarandelbowbrand.com. Make sure you use the code WIQ101 to get some great savings. Everybody likes saving money. I like saving money. So you should too. Collarandelbowbrand.com, WIQ101. It's a match made in heaven. Who better than Derek, Pat, Andrew, the wrestling crew Man, they bout to put an end to y'all careers like a finishing move They bout to give y'all facts on these cats that's fighting on these mats Y'all can't see them like John Cena Even if y'all had 2020 vision, y'all better listen Pay attention and take notes down and realize that it's not your time now And watch these three kings take the crown, Hey. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of WIQ 101. I'm Andrew, with always Derek. Yep. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at WrestlingIQ 101. And today we're sitting with the clockwork angel herself, Katrin. How's it going? I'm good. Thanks for having me. We've been trying to like get this together for, for a while now. For a hot yeah. minute, that man. Was, I want to say that's partially my fault. Only because I like to do things in person. Mm-hmm. I like to feed off energy. I want to see reactions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also the crazy OCD editor part of me. <laughs> like, it just sounds nicer when somebody's it does. in You're the right. studio. Yeah. Not to say that anybody, you know, calling it, it's yeah. fine, but it just, it's more pleasing to yeah. You don't know how, yeah. how easy you just, you're going to make this for me. Okay. <laughs> gonna just take out background noise and that's it. It's like, oh, everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. Until well, somebody messes up and you're like, oh man, I got to yeah. right, Or a call that. drops. Until or Andrew, like until, that. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, call drops are not like, that's the worst. Yeah, when yeah. you're like sitting there and you're like, oh man, or, like you're just waiting for them to answer and not realizing two minutes. I'm like, wow, they really don't want to answer yeah. this question. That's or, you, sad. or can you be like, can you repeat that? Yeah. And then like it's like you have to hear the whole story like, and it breaks up again. Yeah. Like, no, See? that's the worst. What, what type of editing do you do? What do you What do you edit? I do video. Okay. Video, all that. Yeah, I went to college for um, nice communications. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Film and video. Yeah. Nice. Did you did you have a passion for that? Where you did? Yeah, I think ever since uh, I, my cousins and I would love to make our own movies, uh-huh. and you know they didn't have the software that they have now, obviously. Yeah. But we would just love putting things together, and just kind of got hooked on that. So nice. So we're doing that. Nice. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You, what? When did you find like you had that passion? Was there a movie or a show that made you want to like? Uh, there was a specific movie because I loved movies growing up and music videos. Yeah. I loved to. Uh, I think that was <laughs> during like I feel like especially Attitude Era. It was like the thing to go online and make a music video montage. Of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. wrestling, right? Yeah. Everybody used Creed, Sacrifice. Once that started happening, <laughs> greatest game of all time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> My favorite. I used, I used to love videos that were always with. Um, like let the bodies hit the floor. Oh yeah, that was like always my favorite videos. Yeah. I love like the, I believe it was like WWE like invasion, uh-huh. and then they use that for like the the, for the final matches. Like, hit the bodies hit the floor. That was like amazing. I love that all the time. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you who I like because you just make fun of me now. No, so. no. This oh, is boy, go ahead. Listen, there, Nickelback this is, fan, all right? This is a circle. Sorry, Nickelback. <laughs> everyone hates. We're safe here. This is a safe. <laughs> safe. <laughs> Everybody hates Nickelback. Yeah, everyone hates Nickelback. Is this like something yeah, I don't know? Thing, yeah. Like people really hate yeah, Nickelback. They hate, yeah, they hate him. Oh man, yeah. I guess I'm out of the loop on yeah. that one. <laughs> no, actually, I I liked Saliva when they used this song always. Yeah. I was like, that was my song. For them. I guess because I had a connection to him because I was there at Survivor Series oh, as my first pay per view, nice. and they had like a decent song for like the build up of like the coolest match of the decade. Yeah. The chamber. I'm like, this is awesome. I, that was my first oh, yeah? Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah. That was, was MSG. Yeah. Where were you? Do you remember where you were sitting? I was. Actually, we didn't have too bad. We had pretty decent seats. Yeah. But I just remember that being my first Survivor Series. And that was a great one. Yeah. I'll never forget because 
the garden is my home away from home. Yes, absolutely. And I was there. My first wrestling show, I was really spoiled because it was the curtain call. Wow. Yeah. And you're like, you can't get any yeah, like, cooler weird. than that. Ultimate Warrior, Owen Hart, yeah. on the same show. Yeah. And then the, the infamous curtain call. And then I, my dad would take me all the time to the garden. We would we lived out here in Jersey, but we'd us always go to yeah. the garden. And that's cool that you can connect with that. Oh, absolutely. Now, if you could, like, let's say since you like, like, editing or, like, if you could, like, produce, like, any show or movie or anything like that, the, what would it be? The show. Produce. The show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about a TV show, man. <laughs> Even though that'd be nice. <laughs> Or edit any show. Like, what would you want to be a part of? I I, honestly, I would actually, one of my dreams actually has nothing to do with editing or, or producing. It's mm-hmm. actually to be a, a, a voice actor. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I want to be a cartoon so bad. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, and I would love to be a part of the uh, Avatar Last Airbender series. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Because that's my heart. Nice. But, the animated cartoon. You don't speak of the movie. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, the movie did not happen. <laughs> yeah, it was that bad, that bad. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would absolutely love to be a voice actor. Nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You do voice impersonations, right? I told you. Unless I researched. That's research, man. Yeah, 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 look the stuff up. Do, <laughs> do do voice, you do voice impersonations. That's that's what I heard from the grapevine. Uh-oh. I need to talk to this grapevine. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best impression? Oh, uh, God. I know people for a while used to make me do... Um, what's her name? Lois from... Oh, yeah, like, really? All the time. Oh, Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I like that one. That's funny because, like, David Adams does impressions too. Really? Yeah, he does, like, he did Cartman That's for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they were saying. Oh, they used to do Cartman too. What yeah. is it with that? <laughs> and yeah. then he was saying, like, Beefcake can do, like, anybody you want. And I was like, That's yeah. crazy. Like, that's cool. He's brilliant. And like Jay George does impressions too. He oh did. My God. He did. He did. He gave us like ten bumpers. <laughs> he just kept going and going. It was amazing though. I loved it. Was it like the whole? Episode like, was was like, he did that to end for us. It was like Bret Hart and Barack Obama. Oh, <laughs> and then like it was so great. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was great though. It was great. Like, he was like, all right, let's record it. And then like, usually we save him afterwards. And then he's just like, he just like. He's like, I'm just gonna let it record because like he just couldn't keep up with the computer. Yeah, you know? He's just was, like bang, 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 and like just let it go. I was like, damn, this is ridiculous. Like, it was so funny. Like, it was great, though. It was, it was hilarious. So, if you ever listen to our show and you hear, like, Bret Hart saying, this is Wrestling IQ 101, That's you know that was Jay George. <laughs> no, that was really Bret. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was obviously. Lot. Obviously, right? We'll tell you about it, right? Obviously. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So when when you were uh, when you were when you were younger, when I was a wee lass, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what um, like what are, what are your like memories of wrestling, or what what got you into wrestling? Uh, I've loved this since I was six. Yeah, and my oh man, so many memories. But I guess the two main ones uh, were. So wrestling was actually passed down through the women mm-hmm. in my family. So oh. my great grandmother watched, and then I would watch with my grandmother. That was like nice. a huge thing for us. Um, and one of the memories was me sitting on her lap, watching Macho Man versus uh, Jake the Snake and the Snake. Oh, classic! Yeah. Like, yeah. Just yeah. classing on, and she hated snakes. And she, I just remember her grabbing me and her screaming like, "Oh, God, this is horrible!" But it was such a cool moment because yeah. you know it was something that we shared. Um, the other memory is uh, actually a story told a couple of times. It's I was I six? Yeah, I had to know. Um, do y'all remember Teddy Ruxpin? Look at you, babies, both of you. Like, all like what? That okay. name sounds very familiar. Yeah. Teddy Bear? Back in the day, yes, it was yeah, Teddy Bear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Got this. <laughs> Teddy Bear? <laughs> context clues. Context clues. Context clues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had Teddy Ruxman, but he was not Teddy Ruxman at the time. Uh-huh. He was the ultimate warrior. Oh, okay, and nice. I was Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, man. And I was in my grandmother's room, and I remember getting a big slam on the floor. I was on the bed, and I decided Dropped to go for that elbow. <laughs> and I kind of, you know, 
was very passionate. I was really going for that move, and I overshot it, and I ended oh, up yeah. hitting my head, corner, actually right under my eye, the corner of the bureau. Oh, man. And it was one of those things when you're little that you just, like, <laughs> you do the Peter Griffin, you just... Ah, <laughs> yeah. You do that. But it's not when you see... It's not until when you see the blood oh. that that's when you're like... Oh, my what goodness. have I done? And I ended up just gashing all underneath my eye. And I remember my mom running up the stairs. Like, what happened? She saw me covered in blood. Oh, of course goodness. she's freaking out. Mm-hmm. Grabs me, running down the stairs. And I'll never forget me apologizing mm-hmm. the whole entire time. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it wasn't because I thought I did something wrong. Mm-hmm. I thought she was going to make me stop watching wrestling. Oh, man. <laughs> I was terrified she was going to make me stop. Um, but thankfully, that didn't happen. She should have yeah. turned it into a like, Mick Foley thing. Like, I'm hardcore. I know. know. <laughs> I got six stitches. Oh, and goodness. today I have the scars there to this the day. And I can say, like, that was my first wrestling injury. <laughs> I wasn't even in the business. That's funny. <laughs> I, that, that's funny. I have, like, I'll tell you two stories I have. Uh-oh. When it comes to like being a child, I've never told these stories either. Just now that I think about it, you made me think of it. Guys, this is the <laughs> wrestling IQ one oh one experience. It is, it is. When it when I was younger, we used to my friend he always had at his house it was like this porch and it was like it was like just perfect for us to like wrestle on. Yeah. Because it, and then like the way it was set up was like a porch and then it was like, you know, the house with the windows yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah. So first time we're wrestling on the porch. And I remember I get like whiplash and my freaking head goes through one of the glasses. Oh my god. I said I remember that. Like my I still have the scar over my eye. Sucks. And it was like you could see the white mean. I remember I had to get stitches You're for that. Core. Yeah, I am. Solid steel glass. The, and then the, the second time, still don't learn. We're still on no, this porch. Of course not. Why would we? This time we decided to have a Royal Rumble on the porch. Naturally. I remember it's my friend's birthday and we're like twelve and we're gonna go to like Chuck E. Cheese or something. We're having a Royal Rumble, waiting on the parents to come. I flip my friend over the banister. He falls on the side of the house inside the garbage cans. <laughs> my mom comes out freaking, and I didn't get to go to Chuck E. Cheese that oh, day. Okay. I, re- <laughs> I remember that. It's so crazy. <laughs> so those are good times. Good times. Yeah. Good times Looking yeah. back at now, like Chuck E. Cheese is like the worst. They have so many cooler places now. Like, you go. <laughs> I don't, I don't and think I'm, like, I ever went to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, That's I went a couple what? times. Oh man! But like they have like WWE order scrap sessions that like I play, which is like an indoor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's just like, why didn't you have this when I was a kid? Like, yeah, you know, like this is so Wait, cool. We got bump. That's in like free. Oh, yeah. we uh, oh, house of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, why couldn't they have this when I was a kid? Like, I would definitely just live here. Yeah, you know, like it was. That's the first thing I did when we got there too. Play the I games. Just, yeah. Right? I got there so early. I was like, I know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, and it's cool because like you get to meet like uh, like I met Bret Hart there for oh, the nice. fourth time, and they give you like a ten dollar gift card. And you're like, oh, I'm gonna like, go right to the games and start playing. And you're like, Damn, I'm like an adult, so I can't like. <laughs> That's funny. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. Like but like, yeah. and I go for the crane game, so like, so I can try one iPad or something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. where's the iPad? I mean, you got you know, a notepad. I have That's a notepad. about I have a list. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So. <laughs> So, you know, you talked about wrestling being passed on to your generation. Yeah. Um, when did you decide, like, this was, this could be a career. You know, this might be something I want to pursue. It was, oh, sorry. It was when the first uh, Tough Enough competition had come out. Okay. And me and one of my best friends at the time, uh, we've been watching for forever, and we looked at him and just, it kind of, kind of blew us away. So we're like, wait, you can, you can do this? Like, I, you, you sort of think that wrestlers are just made. Yeah. You know, you just, we're like, oh, they teach you. We can learn. We can do this. And we just got extremely excited. We're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So we decided to, um, <clears throat> I think I was, yeah, 19. We decided to uh, just Disclaimer, don't do this. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Don't do it. We decided at the time, because we didn't know about schools, proper schools, which are available now. Please go find them. Yeah. Um, to go to our local gym and teach ourselves oh, uh, on a boxing ring, because that's all they had, which was awful. 
Yeah. <laughs> but we we went, oh my god, we would go like two or three times a week and just batter and bruise ourselves, but work on psychology and I remember it actually I had a moment where everything clicked mm -hmm. as probably one of the greatest moments ever. Um, having matches between me, my best friend, his sister, my boyfriend at the time, and we would just have all these matches. It was great. Um, and I think it was then that I was like, this is something, yeah, we need to do this. Um, but unfortunately, I had to stop because yeah. uh, uh, I had to help my mom. My mom's a single parent yeah. mm -hmm. and had to take care of my family yeah. through living with my grandparents. And she couldn't do that all by herself. Yeah. Start getting sick. and. So this got put on the back burner for a very long time. Yeah. So you, you're the Clockwork Angel. Yeah. Now, can you explain what that means <laughs> to people so, so that they understand? Well, like, like, how did you come up with that? Well, the moniker itself uh, I got from uh, one of my favorite books. Okay. Which is actually called The Clockwork Angel. Okay. Um, it's the uh, first out of a series called The Infernal Devices. It's one of my favorite series. It's one of the, you know how you have matches that you watch over and over and just never get yeah. tired? This book, just over and over, never, never get tired of it. Yeah. Um, and when I first started out, I had actually a steampunk gimmick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the book is very much steampunk, so I thought, ah, oh, this is great. And then, uh, and then uh, somebody came on the scene and all of a sudden was very steampunkish. Yeah. It was like, oh, I can't use this. It was yeah, so Eric Vargas, right? Yeah. It was like, oh. what? <laughs> what? That's what he was. He was, he was, he was very, he's very steampunkish. Oh, Eric Vargas. <laughs> right. um, was... Oh, Becky Lynch, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Um, so I was kind of bummed about that, but because I had to steer away from that, um, I had to create the story behind yeah. what exactly it meant to be the Clockwork Angel. Um, and it did come from a sort of morbid place. Um, but it was this idea of, you know, what if, what if you knew when someone was going to go? Yeah. What if, you know, I, I, I'd had two people you know, one family and one of my best friends um, pass away, and I, you always get to that point where, like, if only I knew, I would have done this, I would have done that. And I kept playing with this idea of what if you did know? What if you knew when your loved one or someone that you knew when they were going to go? Mm -hmm. And then I started playing around with the idea it was, okay, well, what if you knew when you were going to go yeah. with yourself? How would you start living life? what would you do differently how would you go about living your life differently um and most people when you start seeing you know or you hear stories about them not having enough time or they only have this much to live all of a sudden what do they do they don't just sit in the corner they don't you know just be the, they do everything yeah. they go bucket lists they go out and they do everything that they've always wanted to do so i started took that sort of idea and form this whole story around the basis of that idea. Right. And there's a lot of truth to the story that I took from my own real life um, about how I did start very late yeah. in the game, yeah. even though I technically, you know, wanted was messing around at 19, mm -hmm. I stopped for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. So compared to everybody else, I'm super late in the game. Um, so because of that, I know my time is limited mm -hmm. and I know I can't do this for so long. So how am I going to go about my wrestling career? Am I going to live it like, okay, uh, it'll happen. Cause yeah. that's what they always tell you. Don't worry. It takes time. And in my head, it's, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. So you have this person and the story goes that she, uh, she realizes this. She's not getting it as fast as she wants to. Mm -hmm. uh, loved it all her life, all true things, um, and decides just in a moment of desperation, just kind of calls out to the heavens and says, "Hey, help me out! Yeah. I just do anything, anything you could get. I just, I need to get this. I want to be successful in this thing that I've loved forever. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and she gets more than what she bargains for. She gets yeah. an actual angelic being now living inside of her. Right. And it's dormant. And her mission is to find the key to wake it up so that way it can help her, you know, become successful. And also plays around with the idea of what is success? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? So it's this whole journey and all this is happening while the clock is literally counting down. Um, You know, soon enough, I'm going to be putting some some videos out soon that show an actual countdown. And when that clock runs out, we'll see what happens. Wow. Well, man. So, you know, on your YouTube channel, you talked about having depression. Yeah. Um, Do you feel like you overcame that? You know, do you struggle with that sometimes? Sometimes. I still struggle. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I've been struggling with that for years. Uh, Depression, anxiety, all that. Um, But I'm very, I'm definitely in a better place than I was years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And while it's still something I deal with, uh, it's not, I am not my depression. I am not my anxiety. It's, Mm -hmm. It's something that, pops up and I'm still fighting it I'm still saying trying to be like nah not today and I'm also trying to use that to help anybody else who deals with that because somebody who does suffer from that Mm -hmm. our first thing is like yeah we know it sucks it sucks really bad and because I know how it feels I don't want you to feel like that and I don't want you to feel like that so here's what we're going to do and it's all about lifting each other up so it's just so weird because you come out through that curtain and you have all this confidence and you look like you're oh, just, you know, I mean, for <laughs> real, I mean, you know, and you could see it, you know, whether you're at House of Hardcore or you know, Warriors or JP, I mean, you just have this way about you, you come out there and, and you know, I, I was really taken back when I saw it. I was like, damn, like, you know, is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's not, I think people have this idea of, depression or anxiety that you're just supposed to be sitting in a corner weeping and it's like oh okay that person is sad that person Mm -hmm. is depressed but what's so scary about it sometimes it's it's the people who put on the bright smiles wouldn't even notice it yeah Yeah. you know so um it's it's great to have wrestling as an outlet to kind of forget that myself and to hopefully doing what i do in there in the ring or whether i'm joking around which I love to do while I'm out there yeah. making someone else forget about why they're sad or, or anything that they're going through yeah. so in a time where Ooh, this sounds like <laughs> in, a <laughs> in, a, in a time where you know <laughs> wrestling for women especially mm-hmm. is it's a, the market is a lot more saturated than it was you know so many years ago yeah and kind of how you said, like, you know, you have that, you have that clock on you, you mm-hmm. know, that is counting down. Yeah. What, what do you see that you're doing different or that you're trying to do trying to make you, <laughs> trying. <laughs> that you, you know, that you're trying to do to, to separate yourself and make yourself stand out from all the other women? I think the only thing I can think of is that story that I just told mm-hmm. you is, I feel whether it has to do with women or men, doesn't matter. I think yeah. the art of having a backstory yeah. is sort of lost. Yeah. You know, you have great talent out there. Um, but I always felt like, God, it would be great. And maybe it's my thing with comic books. Like I love, mm-hmm. and, and, and novels in general. Mm-hmm. I love storytelling. That's what we do. We're storytellers. Yeah. So, wouldn't it be great you know we all watch netflix we all watch you know marvel movies and all this where you know a huge part of the wrestling community also love you know you'll see them at comic-con because it's it's that same sort of love of stories and i wanted to bring that as a part of of what i'm doing um and maybe there are other women or other wrestlers that are doing that but um I just wanted to make mine different, yeah. really unique. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty interesting story too. The way yeah, you broke yeah, that down, was. I was like, "This is interesting stuff here, man." Because I wanted to make it also uh, a story that will help you guys or or anybody 
listening or they hear about the story sort of reflect on themselves. Yeah. Oh man, what if that was me? Yeah. What if I only had a little bit of time, how would I start living life? Yeah. And maybe, you know, influence them like, uh, maybe I should do some of the stuff that I'm scared yeah. to do. That is true. So we got to talk about JP. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we got to talk about Uprising first. Sure. You know? I mean, were you feeling nervous that night, you know, at the Rawway Rec Center, knowing that, you know, almost every major star has performed in that rec center? I was excited. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody once told me whenever I was, I was like, God, I'm so nervous. And I was like, aren't you nervous? And they were like, no, I like to think of it as excited. Just mm-hmm. saying I'm excited. I was like, oh, I'm going to lose that. Um, I was. I was very excited, especially because... Um, I'd seen a lot of other shows, like Russell Pro was mm-hmm. a lot of the time at, at the Broadway Center and, and all, and just that venue, because yeah. it's so big, and it's like, I was super excited, and then to know that so many, so many great matches have happened for Jersey All Pro, yeah, it was, I was super stoked. So, you know, that night, after that match, I didn't know how badly you were hurt, yeah. and we, we ended up talking in the back, <laughs> and you were limping, you know. It took you out of action from, from was it October? Yeah, end of October to, to, to almost, when did I come back? Like February. Yeah. 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 You know, what was it like sitting on the bench knowing <laughs> that, you know, you have an end date because you're, you're a book, you know, in advance, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, did you weep for a little bit? Did you feel a little you know? bit? I'm still crying. <laughs> you know, yeah, just, or was it, my or was it just here. like, you know, that time where it's just like, I need to get back? Um, it was a little of both. Mm-hmm. The initial is, you know, you, you throw a little pity part and you're like, oh, what was me? Okay. Oh, look at me now. And you try and be as positive as possible and mm-hmm. think, okay, they, they're telling me, you know, eight weeks, maybe, you know. Maybe a little more, but let's let's shoot for for eight weeks. I'm gonna do as much as I can, and then they tell you, well, actually, you're not supposed to do anything. You literally are not supposed to move your foot. Oh man! You just mm-hmm. yeah, which now that takes away not only training, that takes away you know, partially working out. Yeah. So that really plays with your mind. And, mm-hmm. um, it was tough. And I was in the middle of moving. So it was like yeah. all these things oh, all at the same time. With my, you know, Eventually with a walking boot. And there are periods where you're just like, I don't you know, it feels like I'm never going to be getting back to yeah. getting back to that. Um, and then towards the end, once you start seeing progress, I think it's when you start saying, okay, no more. We have to get out of this. Let's yeah. get out of this rut. Let's start thinking about the comeback. Yeah. Um, and that's were you excited because you know at Jersey Opera when we were talking to Monster Mac you know he he was like this is a prominent role you know with you Schlack and Bear Bronson this is something that you know is going to continue through a course of shows knowing that you have a spot yeah. you know um, when they put you in that match with Penelope Ford and Mephisto and um, Gabby you know did you feel like you were part of the elite women chosen yeah no, <laughs> I, I looked I was, at that match I was and like, I, was I was like, like "What am I doing here?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, "Where do they take me out of?" Um, I was, ex- but I was extremely grateful for that. Um, and that, that match, you took it. I mean, Monster Matt kept, kept, uh, caught on it too. You guys literally left the ring. Nobody yeah. else did that that night. You went all over the the rec center, and that's what we wanted too. Because we figured, you know, who was gonna who was gonna expect that. Yeah. And that's we wanted to take everyone off guard. Um, it was a little difficult because I injured myself early on in the match, yeah. so I was going through all around, <laughs> just limping as much as, as I as I was. And but you know what? It sounded like it got a good reaction, yeah. and people seemed to really enjoy it. And you know what? That that's all that really matters. Definitely. One one thing I'll say about Monster Mac, he. He he puts thought into people that he pick. He picks to work, you know, for Jersey All Pro. So it's like you may have been thinking like, "Oh, why am I in this match?" Yeah. But trust me, Monster Mac, he probably saw something really special in you, you. Yeah. that he he picked you. Trust I'm me. I'm super grateful to 
Trust me, we feel the same way sometimes too. He thinks special about me and Andrew, and we're like, what are you talking about? It's like, this is a schmuck thing. Which is, yeah. That's probably exactly what I said. I'm like, I'm not He sees special things in people, though, and we're we're grateful for him as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. He's awesome. Now, when it comes to like the the current product, so let's say you know the big guys, WWE, <laughs> you know Impact, I guess you could throw in there, mm-hmm. Ring of Honor, stuff Good like job. that. Do you do you keep up with any of the product today? I do. Yeah. I try to as as much as possible. Is there anybody that you you know that you like or that you follow? As far as company, uh, uh, uh women wrestlers. Oh, just women. Wrestlers? Yeah, women wrestlers. Uh, you can throw men wrestlers in there too. Yeah, whatever, yeah, 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 whatever like, you like. I follow- <laughs> yeah. There's no gender uh, figure. Um, do I really follow Virgil? Right? With the- <laughs> you know it. It's like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about Virgil at least once. Yeah. A show. Oh, is that that's, that's that's favorite. Favorite. He's our favorite. Yeah. No, that's not the rule. Not that's the- <laughs> the- <laughs> that's what he wants to do. This guy yeah. over all the time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Him too. <laughs> Best one. Best suit. He was a superstar. Yeah, right? Yeah. He was the first superstar. superstar. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Don't, do not go up on this, please. Do not go up. Oh, oh, I, I should rephrase my question. Now that I'm thinking of okay. all this Virgil crap. Uh, <laughs> who, do you, who, who don't you follow? <laughs> not, not the, no, not that. Not that. But what are your thoughts on, like, let's say, women's, the woman's product, women's wrestling today? What are your thoughts on that? Just in general. In general, it's, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, I think, the thing is, I think it's been fantastic for actually longer than people realize. Mm-hmm. That's true. I think it's just getting more recognition. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I remember being, uh, going to FWE shows and watching Candice LeRae kill it. Yeah. And, you know, people were just, obviously didn't really know about her. Now, you know, now look at her and. I just think it's it's about um, being more mainstream mm-hmm. now and recognition. But uh, yeah, ladies have been killing it for a while. Yes, yeah. let's, let's not forget that. Even Definitely. if you look at TNA, I mean, they had the hoax, yeah. the hokey name, you know, knockouts and stuff like yeah, that. But, mm-hmm. how, but they were killing it for so long. Um, you know, going back to JP though. Yeah. Um, the second time around. Yeah. You know how was that? You know, getting back in the ring for the first time. And knowing that, you know, standing across from you was Kyle the Beast and Lefisto, you know. I was more scared of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just like, oh, God, here come the chops. <laughs> and that, that was another match where you also took it, you know, outside. You took it this to the extreme, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just, just plan. Yeah. Somebody should just be in the stands, just have a seat where they're just like, here. <laughs> you know, you're going to come over here anyway. Here you go. Um, you feel like that has to become your playground almost, you know. I would love it to be my playground. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, it was it was interesting coming back there because you're coming back what to the, like the scene of the crime, right? Yeah, that's yeah. where I got hurt. Yeah. So there was definitely nerves there, you know, sort of going over and over in my head, like please don't get hurt again, please don't get hurt. You know, you cannot afford it. Um, but everyone took care of each other, and Lucas was so great. Um, and I think we work pretty well together. We're uh, very much. Back and forth, she gives, I give, and you ever think you'd be teaming up with Schlack? I mean, he is <laughs> such. He, he, he's awesome. Like he's he you know he's just a unique individual. He yeah. is, and I like that because you know we need more unique. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds funny. We need more unique individuals, so everybody's the same. Uh, and know, even Bear Bronson too. He, he's oh, Bear. Bear's so good. They're so good. Um, and I love our little fashion because we don't look like, no. and you know, mm-hmm. they put us all together and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> but then as, as you see us sort of interacting with each other, you kind of have a moment, oh, yeah. I get it. They're all crazy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> totally get it now. And they match. So. You know, one thing that was kind of interesting, you had that new gear. Yes. You know, how long were you working on that for? Uh, I actually sent it out to this girl, uh, amazing, super talented, um, designer. She, uh, her name's, well, she goes by Butch Diva. Her name's Tiffany Rose. She does a lot of, uh, the gear for a lot of wrestlers. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I just had this idea and I saw this picture and I said, can you create this? If you can make this happen, this would be great. Cause I really didn't have, I was just sort of taking things that I loved and mm-hmm. putting them together. But what I was noticing is people weren't getting, it, it wasn't matching up mm-hmm. my, how I looked and my story just wasn't meshing. Yeah. Um, so when I would tell them my story, they would go, Oh, but then kind of look at me and go, I don't, I don't get that from what you're wearing, but that's a cool story. Yeah. So I think with this, you know, we have the angel wings on the back, you know, it was just something totally different for me. Um, and I figured coming back from injury, let's, let's start anew. Let's, let's not get hurt anymore. And let's start <laughs> anew and let's feel refreshed. So, and, um, and it feels good. I, I kind of like it. Nice. So far, I've been getting the thumbs up. Yeah, it's awesome. So, I was just kind of trying to thinking. Um, so, kind of like, is is there anybody in particular, like, that you let's say, like, look at for kind of like a motivation? Because when you when you you know gave the story, like the first thing that came to my mind was Diamond Dallas Page. He started late in the game. You know, and I think he started when he was like 35 yeah. or something like that. And he's like one of the most Probably successful. More, yeah. He's like one of the most successful wrestlers of all time. And that's the person that people usually give me. They're just yeah. like, oh, don't feel that way. Don't feel bad. Mm-hmm. Look at Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah. Um, another one that I found out recently uh, was Ivory, who oh, yeah. is going to be inducted yeah, into yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Uh, she didn't get signed to WWE, I think, until she was 36, 37. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... I always hear stories about that. And yeah, it is, it is motivating. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing is you know, they started and I don't think they saw an end date. Yeah. And, and I sort of do. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're putting the pressure on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because I work better under pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I absolutely do. It sucks. It's like I already have anxiety. Why would I do this to myself? <laughs> right. Uh, but I've always, I mean, that goes back to college. I yeah. wait the night before to do a you know, 10 yeah. page paper, but I would get an A on that paper. Yeah. But if I were to start a project or a paper a week before, I would always get the most horrible grades on it because I just, I wasn't focused. I was doing this and that. If you're, you know, <laughs> procrastination kids, yeah. don't do that. I'm sorry. Don't listen to me. It only worked for me. Um, <laughs> it's so it's the whole story, you know, again, bringing it from true life. Yeah. This is putting pressure on myself to get it together, get better, and you know, yeah. go be a success. I feel like I feel like you're you're in a, a, a maybe a better spot than you think you are, because I feel like today when it's like you look at wrestling and you look at guys that are like just like great, like AJ Styles. It's like what forty something? Uh, yeah. I think he's like forty one. Uh, Bless his heart. Yeah. Then you look at like Austin Aries. I think Austin yeah. Aries is a little bit older than AJ yeah. Styles. It's like you look at those guys like that, and those guys are like fabulous. And AJ Styles, he doesn't even look like he's forty one. Yeah. So it's like the, those guys. I think you're in a pretty good spot. It's like I feel like you know even you take care of yourself even, better. Even more. It's because I use night cream. Yeah, you just like <laughs> yeah, if that's you want to know the secret, AJ Styles uses uses phenomenal night cream. There you go. That was that Georgia food he was no, eating. I thought that was what it was. Maybe something, something in the water down there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? I can't put sure twenty one. We put twenty one candles on that cake. Twenty one. So you know, when we sat with Helen Vale. Mm-hmm. I asked her, you know, do you feel like a role model for little girls and stuff like that? And she was like, don't look up to me. Oh. Um, do you feel that way sometimes? She's like, you know. Um, I, I don't know if I am, mm-hmm. but I know I'm in a position where when I go to shows, I always see kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll always, <laughs> no matter how mean or... You know, I'm yelling, and they will always come up to me afterwards and ask for a hug and picture that I'm never going to say no. Um, so I don't know if I'm a role model, but I want to be the best one I can be mm-hmm. if if that's you know if that's how they see it. Um, I think all of us are sort of because we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're entertaining, but we all looked up to other people when we were that age too and said, ah, I want to be 
want to do that. And yeah. I would love to be that person for somebody else yeah. who thinks maybe they can't do anything. And then they see me and they're just like, oh, maybe I can. And I go over to them like, yes, please go <laughs> do that and do it better than I could ever do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, uh, now speaking of like Helen Val and Penelope Ford, mm -hmm. Lufisto, uh, a lot of good names that are out there. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody that you haven't faced that you would like to face? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to follow. I want to work like everybody. He's like he's selling Arcadia's gimmick. You know? <laughs> you know, he has Arcadia versus Arcadia everybody. Versus everybody. Oh, Arcadia versus right. everybody. Arcadia versus everybody. Arcadia everybody. Including Arcadia. <laughs> I would, well, I would that? wear that shirt. Put that on the shirt. <laughs> Put that on the shirt. <laughs> Uh, you, you might have to go through Colin West first, you know. Like he might be like the shield. <laughs> like no, I would. Yeah, I. He might bring I, the fight to you. you know? <laughs> That's fine. I feel <laughs> blessed to be able to do what I'm doing. So anybody that I get to work with mm -hmm. is a blessing because no matter what kind of match you have, you're always learning something from it. Yeah. So I don't care, guy, girl, whatever. Or, Kaiju big battle. There's a waffle coming at me. Yeah. I'm gonna learn something from that waffle. Nice. You know, <laughs> the, the, pancakes is better. The, the, pancakes. Wow. That's We're gonna debate the, that's the great pancakes. waffle pancake. Right. Pancake. That's what. Even I'll the new day, waffles. they like pancakes. Like, man. I'll, I'll yeah. definitely take a waffle. <laughs> yeah, pancakes come up the Budio's box. The Belgian yeah. waffle, bro. Come on, yeah. come on, bro. Pancake. Oh, mm. Pancakes, bro. All the way. <laughs> that's, that's Do you say syrup or syrup? I say, uh, I don't uh, even know. Now that you said that, I don't even know how to say uh, it now. I say, I say uh, uh, syrup. I say delicious. No. <laughs> like, hey, can I get syrup? I don't know. Syrup. I say syrup. <laughs> yeah, I guess I say syrup. syrup? <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. Now I'm really thinking about it. Every time I say order syrup. Orange or orange? Orange. Orange. Coffee or coffee? Coffee. 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 Yeah. coffee. Chocolate or chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate. It's fun, guys. This is the, this is the rest of this podcast. <laughs> oh, man. So, do you, speaking of, like, like things that are going on. You speaking could, of uh, food. Yeah, <laughs> food, right? That's funny. Um, what do you think of the... Uh, I don't know if this is the first time this has been done, too, but uh, James Ellsworth with the intergender title. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that recently? I did. Do you yeah. think that that's something cool, something innovative for the business right yeah. now? Yeah, I think that that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you like there it? are intergender matches. Why should there not be? Yeah. Well, that, Warriors are wrestling. That's like every other match. You yeah. Know, you know? I was kind of wondering if WWE was actually going to make like the intergender like tag team titles. I don't know if they would do it. For their I, whole tournament that they're having. Oh, I see what you're yeah. Yeah, 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 the mixed yeah, match yeah. tournament. That, but I, I feel like that era's gone. But that's the difference, is it? Because it's mixed match. It's not yeah. uh, intergender. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah oh, well, yeah, because the women fight the women, right, the right, men right. fight the men. I get what you're saying. Yeah. WWE is PG. They're not going to do that <laughs> stuff. They're like, I'm not doing that. You want us to show men beating on women? What's the matter with you? It's like, no, definitely not. I mean, we turned out pretty all right. We watched that, right? What? I mean. You know, we saw, like, Bubba Ray put Mae Young through a table. Was, <laughs> and Melissa. Yeah. Yeah. And we turned out all right. These human so. beings, right? I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still, phenomenal. I'm great. <laughs> I'm still a little off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what Derry Gray didn't go around saying "suck it," you know, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is true. I mean, <laughs> when I grew up, that was, it was just normal stuff. Yeah, I I mean, fine. yeah, yeah. I mean, sweet. So what, what do you think about the whole like the the drama with the fabulous Mula Battle Royal? Oh man. How they WWE had to change the name and everything like that. Well, I mean, they listened to their audience, right? For mm -hmm. once, That's yeah, <laughs> they did. Um, and yeah, there seems to be there was a lot of controversy about that, but I think the name that they have now, what is it? WrestleMania Women's, Women's Royal, just a Women's Battle Royal, something like that. There you go, short, yeah. sweet, and to the point. I didn't even my, my thing. We were we were talking about this. Like, all this stuff that came out, I didn't even know about half of the stuff. And my thing is, like, people are complaining about this now, but when Mula was on TV every week on Raw, mm -hmm. nobody complained about anything. <laughs> no, well, you, because times are different now. It's crazy, man. It is. The times are yeah. very different now. That is true. We're evolving. We're growing. We're realizing what's, you know, what's not right. That is true. 
So, you know, when I was watching your video on YouTube, you said you like video games in Long Beach on the on the long walks on the beach. Is that true? Yes. Both of those true? Yes, both of them. Oh, that's man. Absolutely true. Do you like Long Beach too? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little tongue tied, but you know that. <laughs> what are some of your favorite video games? Legend of Zelda all day, every uh, day. Zelda, all day, I love Zelda. Every day. I, like I almost wore my I heart heart half heart Zelda. Oh man, that was dope. Now you're like you're like a Nintendo well, sixty do, Nintendo I mean, sixty four. I have my Triforce earrings. Yeah, yeah. So. you like Nintendo sixty four Zelda. Ocarina of Time is the greatest. Yeah, I used to love Zelda. Uh, but the original will always be my favorite. Um, well, well, because like, I got it when I was, as a birthday present for when I was seven. Mm-hmm. And it was great to open it up and you see the gold cartridge. And yeah. it's so different from everything else. I was like, oh my god. And then I didn't see the light of day for, you know, months. <laughs> That's funny. Did you play Super Smash Brothers? Yes. Oh my god! Yeah, I used to STD all day. Smash Brothers. Dawn. Smash Brothers. Yeah, you ever watch the True Life thing though? No. What? Like, what True Life? Said, like I'm a professional gamer, and the guy's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to my friend's house this Friday night and like STD, oh, like Smash Till Dawn." Smash. <laughs> <laughs> they could have multiple meanings. Yeah. Stop the drama right. from Jersey sure. Shore. Yeah. That's that's too. <laughs> you're making me think because it's like you say you got the Nintendo 64 at seven. No, 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 not at seven. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I got uh, Legend of Zelda, the original Legend of Zelda. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to say, man, we're like no, the same no, age. You're no, making no. me feel like I got clock now, too. I'm going <laughs> to... Jesus, man. I got to go do I'm stuff. I'm an old fuddy-duddy. I got to go do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. You still game today, though? Yeah. You have, um, you know, um, a preference? I don't, I don't have... No, I don't have really a preference, but... <laughs> I don't have any of the really new consoles. Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely want a Nintendo Switch. Absolutely. Yeah. I really want a Nintendo Switch. Anybody listening? <laughs> 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 um, but I I love stuff that I grew up with. So I have a, um, I have an old uh, Wii console that just nice. happens to have... It was a friend of mine, and they just happen to have, like... I don't know if they jailbroke it, or there's just whole ton of old games on there yeah. from Sega you know everything oh, yeah. so I'll play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Street Fighter and everything uh, Altered Beast yes Altered Beast all day um, and stuff like that I love I love games like that I haven't really played anything recent I'm trying to think about it I don't think so but yeah between that and reading and playing with my cat my cat Whose name? Lucha. Oh my goodness. All right, nice. this, all right, this is something I have to ask. <laughs> what is it with wrestlers okay. and cats? I swear every wrestler we've had on here has a cat. Well, if you think, if you think about it, first okay. of all, I'm just an animal person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love dogs, cat, everything. Um, but, and this is just my theory, uh-huh. because we're away for so long and because we go away often, okay. it's easier to leave the cat alone for a couple of days, come back, cause you got the litter box, everything's yeah. there, rather than having a dog who, you know, you have to walk in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at least the dog will come up to you and look at you like, hey, you're home. When you Where get home, cat is just like, oh, hey, you're back again. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I wish, cause I can't have a cat because I'm allergic. Oh, no. So I'm like, but damn. Yeah. Damn, like cats are evil. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> they are the best heels ever. You leave them alone. Yeah, absolutely. I learned everything I know from Lucha. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we we learned everything from Rocky. Right? There you cookie. Go. <laughs> yeah, His dog is Cookie. Oh. My dog is Rocky. Oh, cookie. Yeah, I got Cookie. He has Rocky. <laughs> so, all right, another hidden talent of yours that I've done research what? on, besides the voice impersonations, Uh-oh. is it true that you can sing? Uh, and that you know how to play instruments. Where are you getting? Who did you talk to? <laughs> I'm gonna hurt whoever told. Me. This is research, man. This is yeah, research. But how? Especially the singing thing. This is I research. I feel like that's not definitely not common knowledge. Very few people. Um, yeah, I like to sing. Yeah. I never like saying like, oh yeah, I'm a singer. Um, I love singing. Yeah. Um, I was in gospel choir all four years of high school 
and uh, then did like a little bit of acapella yeah. in college. Um, yeah, and then I love singing. And then uh, instrument wise, um, I play everything by ear. Uh, I really would love to learn how to read music because that would yeah. make things a lot easier. Um, but my go to is piano. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm trying to get back into that. Now that I've sort of settled in my new place, um, yep. I'm also going to try and teach myself guitar, which should be interesting. Nice. So, yeah. So, well, let's not get too excited. <laughs> let's, let's, do, wait. do you have a, like a go-to song you like to play on the piano? On the piano? Yeah. Uh, besides Chopsticks? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's usually probably an Evanescent song. Yeah, it's usually like My Immortal. Like, we, yeah. I used I had a friend and in music class he knew he was the only one that like knew how to play the piano uh-huh. and we always wanted him to do the uh, Friday the 13th oh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no, what we always wanted him to do I used to love playing the Rugrats theme song. The, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that before I would always because yeah. I would pop all my friends start playing yeah, it's nostalgic. Like, ah. that's nostalgic that's nostalgic that's pretty yeah. legit <laughs> so you know when you look back at what you've done in House of Hardcore, mm-hmm. you know, how how was it working with Tommy Dreamer and, and getting advice from him? That guy. It's it's been awesome. Um super blessed and super lucky to um to have gotten the opportunity to work there and experience so much and you know, even have a match I had uh at the I play mm-hmm. was um, had my first singles match there yeah. against Angelina Love, Love yeah. and it was great. And he took a chance. That's that's been the whole story. It's like he he's been taking chances on me, and I couldn't be more grateful. And his advice. He was just, we were just at the show. Um, I worked uh, pro wrestling I magic. Yeah. yeah, and I asked him. I was like, boss. Can you Watch my, watch my match mm-hmm. and he's always there to watch and critique and I'm so thankful for that it's funny because I went to an iPlay meet and greet with him I won yeah. it and uh, so I went there with our other colleague Pat who's uh, not here today and he was like every time they use somebody at House of Hardcore they end up getting called up to WWE oh, really? you know? <laughs> I was like yeah yeah I guess so you know, I didn't think about that, but yeah, he's kind of right. I mean, every time he uses somebody, somebody just he's got the magic you know, touch. You know, you feel like that might be a little bit of a stamp of approval if uh, they see you on his show. I mean, maybe I try not to think of anything like that because then you know anxiety starts and then you start yeah. overthink. I am definitely no <laughs> anyone who knows me knows how much I overthink. So I, I just sort of stay in the moment, and just focus on you know. Yeah. Parkour and, and what we get to do there and and it's been great it's been amazing i've got to travel because yeah. of them and go to places that i've never been to so do you feel like in like twitch might help them out you know especially expand i think so especially since uh now we're starting to see more and more wrestling companies jump up jump on this uh yeah that is true twitch bin um i think Especially like we were talking about before, how it's that wrestling community that also shares with the comic book community, but we also share with the video game community. So this is a nice confusion, and we get to um, really expand. I think it's I think it's definitely great. And I feel wrestling fans are like I think out of anything in general, wrestling fans are like the most passionate fans. Yeah, wrestling. I I. Just recently, like there was a um, there was a poll on ESPN okay. that they put up for St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. Who's the greatest Irish athlete of all time? Oh, no. So Tom Brady is on this list. Okay. And who's leading the list? Sixty eight percent to like thirty two percent. The Undertaker. The under- I didn't even know the Undertaker was Irish number one, <laughs> but the Undertaker <laughs> is leading this as the greatest af- uh, Irish athlete of all time, sixty eight percent to thirty two percent over Tom Brady. I had I was just pegged for it. I was like, <laughs> I was, and it's, it's like the the power of wrestling fans is like, yeah, it's it's crazy, man. They it's so true. They dominate everything. They will dominate everything, and they will support. That's one thing about yeah. wrestling fans. They will support you for sure, yeah. no matter what. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, talk about the evolution from WoW and now breaking off into women's you know, or warriors, you know. How's that been for you? Because you participated in the, in the first. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I'll be back there actually for the uh, April fourteenth. Women's uh, warriors. Um, it was great. It was great to be a part of you know the inaugural show, and um, it's just a good locker room too. Yeah. It's just all the women that were in there are just really great workers, and they're there to give it their all and, and put on a great show and. There's such a camaraderie there, so I've I've enjoyed my time there. Yeah. Now we talked about um, Tommy Dreamer giving you advice. Mm-hmm. So for anyone who's wanting to get in, what's your advice to them? Oh. <laughs> That's good. I would tell them to get in, or if if they're in, they they're just getting started, just they getting want to get started. into the business, yeah. Like, what, what advice would you give them? I would say uh, make sure you do your research. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to go to a school, do not bump <laughs> on a boxing ring. <laughs> go to a school, do your research on the schools. Go down there and also test, you know, go for a day. Just yeah. ask whoever's running. Just say, hey, can I just, I just want to test it out. I want to try to see how you feel. Yeah. I'm all about, I'm all about energy. So if you go in there and there's funky energy, yeah. Eh, all right, this place isn't for me. Go to the next one. Okay, this one feels right. Go. Um, and then after that, what I would let them know is there are going to be days that you're like, oh, this. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. I don't. This is. I still have those days where I'm just like, oh my god, this is. I don't know. Is it worth it? Do I keep going? And I'm just going to let you know if this is in your heart. If this is what you love keep going yeah. just keep going i promise you it gets better yeah. <laughs> this is life advice too <laughs> just keep going <laughs> awesome you know how is getting in the ring with faye jackson ah <laughs> my faye, faye is awesome. <laughs> my faye she's amazing we actually first time we started training together at ftw that's where i first started out um and we started there and she was like the first uh girl there that you know because i was training with all guys for the longest Mm -hmm. time and then she popped up one day i'm just like oh this is awesome we got to um work around a bit um i so distinctly remember giving her a really stiff leg drop i'm sorry um but it was great and and since then we've always kept in touch and we finally got to uh work a match not too long ago at i think bcw uh, and it was great. And she's, man, she's just doing all the things. Yeah. I'm so happy and excited for her. Definitely. Now, when it's all said and done, when the clock runs out, Ooh. what do you want to be known for? Oh. What do I want to be known for? Uh, for making people's hearts smile. Yeah. If I did something to make you forget even for a moment how crappy or something you're going through is just awful and you just finally got that moment of reprieve and I made you feel good at some point or throughout the whole match or something I said afterwards whatever the case may be um I hope that's that's what I leave behind so are you gunning after Nikki Adams title in a while? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Nikki is a hell of a champion. She has had that thing for how long now? Uh, it's coming. It's getting it's, close. Yeah, yeah to, right. It's getting close to a year. Right? Almost a year. I'm thinking. I mean, I just want to help her out. Yeah. So now she doesn't have to carry it all the yeah, time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, you know, that does things for your spine. <laughs> So I'm really just looking out for her. So, yeah. Are there any other championships you're gunning for that you like to, maybe the Jersey All Pro Women's Championship? Are there other ones that you like to collect? All the time. 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 Yeah. Because I feel the only thing I'm, I would say the only thing that I'm specific on, because really it's, it, I'm, 
whatever I can experience, whatever mm-hmm. title. I may never win a title. I, you know, it, it's all about me finally getting to live the dream that I've wanted to since I was little. Mm-hmm. That's all it's about. So anything I can get is great. But if I'm going to be specific of like one thing that I would love to just, um, I would love, love, love to go for the progress women's title. Oh, nice. Progress is like one of my go-to goals of this whole thing. If I don't make it, all right, but man, nice. that would be amazing. And, you know, you see a lot of women like Nikki Adams and, and mm-hmm. Bonesaw, Jesse Brooks. I mean, yeah. they're getting chances at, you know, women of honor. Mm-hmm. You know, is that something that you want to try to look at trying to do oh, for yeah. yourself? I, I went to uh, the Women of Honor um, tryout camp mm-hmm. uh, last year. I had an amazing time. Mm-hmm. learned so much uh, stuff that I still use. And, um, yeah, they're, they're always down for, for me to come back. So I would love to to start branching out and I love them. They're so yeah, great. I feel like that's they got it. great trainers too. Yeah. And, and the, the locker room scenes. Plus Jesse's there. I love Jesse. <laughs> Jesse's my girl. <laughs> and then, you know, you got to be in the ring with Rebel. Yeah. You know, how was it working with her? And did you pick up anything from her that, you know, because you said you pick up something from every match. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from her... It was definitely a showmanship. It was all about character, and right? Um, it was, who else was it? It was me and Rebel versus, oh my god, I forgot who the other person was. That's a good idea, because I... And you forget? <laughs> I forgot uh-huh. too. It's in my it's notes. Good. I never uh-huh. saw Rebel. <laughs> I was distracted. No, I'm, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was. <laughs> she she definitely. Uh, I took goodness. a lot away about you know about character and, and really playing to the crowd. She played to that crowd, yeah. and they were all about it. And she, she come in. Hate her, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah she commanded your attention. You, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, so, okay, relax, <laughs> relax. <laughs> so. Let's see. I'll ask, uh, this will be a tough question. Oh, no. Put you on the spot right now. So you cut. There's, you know, you have your your angelic spirit inside of you. So there's there's a couple other wrestlers who <laughs> they kind of have like you know the same thing. They have some type of spirit or something, spirit? something, Damn, something going on. And uh, <laughs> no. you have like you know you have like woken, broken Matt Hardy. Okay, yeah. You have Bray Wyatt. Of course, yeah, the Undertaker for years, right. uh, Papa Shango. Oh yeah. So yeah, let's see. Made the <laughs> Ultimate Warrior throw up green. Yeah, yeah. Which still haunts my dreams yeah. to this day. It's, it's, it's like some some Kane if you include right. in there. Yeah. Uh, so Finn Balor has the demon. Right? Finn Balor has the demon. Yeah. Has the demon, so same. give me your top three. <laughs> that's a, that's this is a tough one. Put you on the spot. Yeah, you gotta is. think about it. Do you ever think about face painting like yeah. the demon Finn Balor? Uh... Yeah, because you know that's his thing. That's yeah. his you ever think that doing that? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think there's already so much makeup on her face already, <laughs> and then at the end uh, we just we already look like a hot mess. So um, top three. Top three otherworldly characters. Otherworldly characters. I like that. See, I like the way you put that. Uh, I have to say, well, obviously, Taker. Yeah. I want to, this is in no random order, but um, I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, they're going to come out from somewhere and be like, what did you do? <laughs> Sorry. I'm the other person. Um, Taker. Uh, I, was, I mean, Hardy's just killing it with the, the yeah, yeah. Definitely. and then I have to do the Papa Shango just for nostalgic reasons yeah. it's, it's that was and I think at that time also it was such an otherworldly yeah. character that was so memorable mm-hmm. that I mean look you're you're putting him into that category yeah. but, you know so yeah he's definitely in there for me that's a good top three I like the Godfather fan <laughs> <laughs> So, I wonder why. <laughs> it's another guy in time. <laughs> in comma. 
Yeah. Kama. <laughs> yeah. Kama was one of my all time uh, favorites. You know, he took the chain, made it earned to a chain. Yeah. So he was definitely up there. <laughs> so, you know, one of these other matches I want to talk to you about was uh, MJ Jenkins and, yeah. and, Vanity. and Vanity. Yeah. I wasn't getting in the ring with those two ladies. Oh, they're so good. They were, I love that. Um, I mean, I think any uh, wrestler will tell you multi person matches can be a cluster. Um, and I don't know, something just clicked with us that night and everything went actually pretty smoothly and we the three of us had really good chemistry and that was the very first battle club pro show too um and it was in my hometown and it was great all around there you know i know mj's killing it and so is vanity so it was great working with both of them awesome. and then another one you know vita, vita, vita scott you know you you've been in the ring with yeah. her you know, how, you know she she's one of those um unique characters too because she was with ROH for such a long time yeah. and you know how was it getting in the ring with her she was great too she she taught me a lot um, especially about timing um, she had Battle Club Pro actually uh, put up a tweet not too long ago sort of because I uh, they have a all oh, women's yeah. show coming up and they had all our pictures kind of up saying you know which which match missing from here and uh even vita kind of put it like i kind of want to rematch and i was like yes me too <laughs> that would be great because it was it was great working with her and um her timing was great and she had great ideas you know she just wants to try different things and i'm always for that if i can do it and if we can make it look amazing sure let's go for it so i always appreciate that yeah definitely um have you have you wrestled outside of the country I have not, but I've been to, uh, I went to Pakistan last nice. year okay. for wrestling. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and that was me. It was the very first time that the country was ever allowed to have live wrestling. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And <laughs> it was, it was, fa- I had my gear with me. Yeah. I was, you know, just good, but uh, I did commentary over there. Nice. So check that if anybody needs commentary <laughs> <laughs> now an international <laughs> oh, international yeah. broadcast <laughs> yeah, seriously it, it was it was such an amazing experience and um yeah i love it there i i can't wait to go back that's awesome that's but, awesome has there been something that you haven't accomplished you know like that that that, that you really like that it just irks you that you need to get done before maybe going to a bigger company or doing something bigger. I don't, I don't think it irks me, but it's just one of those like you know you have desires. You're okay. just like, oh, I really. Um, I think for me because I grew up with a love of not only British culture, British comedy. I I want so badly to work a show in the UK. Yeah. Very very much. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll call my people. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. If if nothing else, I think that's like, I guess you could say that's, I don't want to say my number one goal, but it's one of those things like, man, if that happens. It would be awesome. It would be awesome. I'd be happy with what, you know, what I'm doing now and, and growing and learning, but if I make it to UK, yeah. happy k So American... The Office or British The Office? Uh, Which one? Come on. I think it's the American one, hands down. <laughs> this will determine. Your answer will determine how I view you for the rest of your life, okay? Yeah, you're on the spot. Oh, man. No pressure. That's no pressure. Okay, so how about this? We'll make a deal. The American Office, uh-huh. but the British, whose line is it anyway? Okay, uh, I can deal with right. that. Fair enough. Okay. I can deal with that. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> the British office, I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going Don't on? Don't knock it. Come on, Dwight. Dwight is awesome in the American one. Though, right? I, mean, I mess Him with, uh, I mess with, isn't, isn't like Doctor Who, isn't that from like the UK or something? Yeah, like, I mess with Doctor Who. See? I can mess with that. See? I mess with but the, the office now. Black Mirror. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. The, 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 they tell different jokes than us, so you don't understand it, like... 
I don't. I don't know. I, I just like the I American think, Office. I, I've grown up with that, so yeah. Maybe I get. You understand? Because I get the, yeah. uh, those references, and, and then every, I look at everybody else and I'm like, no, just, just like, me. Like, like, okay, like, yeah. No. <laughs> it's like no. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going. I was going to say, where can fans, if they wanted to follow you, where can they find you on social media? Uh, the social media. Yeah, you need that. I, <laughs> I also need to make it one thing. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to change it to oh. one thing. But uh, you, so Twitter is where I do a lot of the stuff. Is at Clockwork Catred, mm-hmm. and then uh, Instagram is at clockwork angel catred mm-hmm. and i'm also at clockwork angel catred on twitch nice mm-hmm. and uh who knows maybe we can do some some live streams of yeah. legend zelda or something <laughs> 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 that would be awesome <laughs> just me screaming at the television the entire time you put it on okay. youtube you'll have a million yeah, views sure. trust yeah. me trust me <laughs> My like son watches the weirdest stuff on YouTube. Pro wrestling so. meltdown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Well, and for us, we are Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's it? That's oh. You want more? You want more? That, oh, you man, want more? I was having fun. <laughs> She's having so much fun. So <laughs> right, what do you want? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. You, could, have... you have a question for us? So. How do we get so adorable or something? <laughs> <laughs> So how do we get so great? Still working on that. How, how do we get so great? I mean, we have our thoughts on that. How did you get so great when you were younger? Did you always want to be podcast interviewers? Tell me about yourselves. Yeah, no, I didn't start this. We just, was, you know, one day we were on the phone and Andrew's like, "Meet me at Best Buy." Yeah, yeah. It, it <laughs> was buy microphones. <laughs> it was, and that was it. It was a little bit before that because we had other interests, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, life happens. And, this is more realistic. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> a more realistic you know, like, accomplishment. Um, but as long as you're doing it because you love it, yeah. And yeah. it and was that's all that it was one of those things. That he he just kept saying like, let's do something, let's do something. And finally, he's like, all right, I'm just gonna go to Best Buy and look at microphones. And he's like, all right. I'm, then like the next day, he's like, all right, let's go together. And then, uh, you know, we were just sitting at Best Buy, and, and this was not the idea. It yeah. was uh, it just came about. Yeah. Well, the idea was we were just gonna rat. And and poke fun of like Raw and SmackDown. Okay. And then yeah. you know who does that? Yeah, right. To everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow I ended up booking Delroy Alexander okay. and uh, Monster Mac. Yeah. And our first episode was with Delroy, but it fell through because it didn't record right. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, and Delroy then, came back. Again. He talked to us the second time. <laughs> yeah, he was really a second chance. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And we ended up getting Monster Mac to be our first guest, and he was like. He was like sitting with us and he's like, this is going to snowball for you. And I'm like, eh. and now, well, probably not. See? <laughs> you know, but it was crazy. You know, and then we talked. What to, episode is this going to be? This is going to be what? 73? Yeah. This is going to be number yeah. 73. And since then, we've been able to talk to, you know, Nunzio, Tony Mama Luke, uh, Al Cannon, Snow. Al just Snow, yeah. To you know, and covering shows with, you know, that you've been on, talking to Matt Riddle and, you know, Limitless. Limitless Limitless Keith Lee and yeah. um yeah, I love Keith. you know people it's kind of surreal like you grow up watching these people mm-hmm. and then you get well to... that's how I feel sometimes <laughs> going to shows right? just, yeah. you grow up watching it especially at the House of Hardcore shows and, yeah. like, oh, yeah. and I was like I was telling Bill Buchanan I was like I was I was so mad at your characters you know when you're beating up too cool that, like I would turn on my N64 and just beat you up all day just yeah. for beating up my favorites and now it's real that I'm on the phone talking with yeah. you, you know. So. so it's great that you're living your dream. Yeah. yeah. So it has nothing to do with what's realistic. It's you're doing what you love. Yeah. And then it's, it's more like um, it's we see it from a, a different view as well. Because, you know, there's, there's like we love wrestling. And, you know, there's people who you really see what you what's on TV. Mm-hmm. So for us, it's like, you know, we're talking to people who are like on their journey. Yeah. So... And we're seeing people that we talk to, and then it's like they're an impact, or they make it to NXT or something. And, and it's yeah. like it's it's crazy for us. And it's like we happens? we feel like we're so growing we're with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. So hopefully, you know, it's like it's just yeah. it's crazy. And then yeah. it's like we feel like you know 
like as we grow like we're growing with you guys yeah and it makes us happy to see you guys yeah. you know just make it yeah like well, one, i'm happy for you guys yeah, like one mean team you know they, they've been featured on roh and stuff mm-hmm. like that and uh, uh ktb mm-hmm. he's on evolved you know so and even you with the house of uh, hardcore yeah. it's just like you know every time you get like a notch or something like that i'm like oh man we were like a small part yeah. <laughs> of like getting to know you and getting your story well we, i appreciate you guys and mm-hmm. i'm i'm so grateful that you want to be on, on the podcast because i was like I don't know what that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well we but, definitely uh, appreciate you we yeah, definitely appreciate you coming you. on and Thank you. you know spending time with us over an hour with us yeah oh, jesus right. <laughs> I can only I can spend like ten minutes with him at a oh time. Yeah, so like yeah, an hour we did. Ten minutes, Jesus. it's just like days where we we are inseparable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Do do the do the shout outs. It's a shout outs. Do, do, do the do you want me to do that? Right, yeah, go ahead. Ahead. <clears throat> <laughs> You have to do it in a different. Aspect. Yeah, you have to Every, do it. You have to do it, and it has to be so great. <laughs> But no, seriously, guys, you are listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And you're listening to us on the B Plus Player Network. Give Mark a shout out. Give him a subscriber. We are <laughs> out. You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast. Powered by B Plus Player Radio. One more for the good guy.